Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rahak Kodash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David the elect, the 144,000 men that are doing His work in sincerity and truth. And much love to the one third of the men, women, and children that are listening, learning, and helping of the house of David. Uh, to you all, I say shalom and greetings. Okay, um, so as you can see, this this video is titled uh, "Day of Atonement." But before I get that, I just want to make one quick uh, off-topic uh, comment. Uh, well, two. Uh, one, uh, Baba Kusha subscribed to uh, my uh, second our secondary page, GMS Salt Ba. Um, because you know, I'm already got like two strikes on this page and I just want to get as many people following that page as possible before they hit me with another one. Uh, secondly, I will be remiss to, uh, not say, uh, you know, shalom to those, uh, brothers out in Atlanta, uh, you know, and there were various camps, uh, who all met with us out there as well. Um, you know, it's, it's truly a beautiful time that we're living in. We're seeing the, the state of Babylon collapse while we're rejoicing. You know, those brothers uh, were very brotherly and amazing, you know, and, and far, far beyond words, you know. So I, I just wanted to get that disclaimer out there. You know, uh, I know. Um, yeah, I just want to say that. OK, um, so now more over into the lesson. OK, uh, I have probably about uh, maybe about 10 scriptures that I want to get. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go through the spirit. The Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. OK, so. As we're entering upon the Day of Atonement, which is this coming Thursday night, uh, Thursday night, I believe the date is the 27th, is either the 26th or the 27th is when it'll begin, but I know it's that Thursday, uh, Thursday sundown to Friday sundown. Uh, and I really want to talk about the the heaviness of it this year, all right, um, you know, the years that we've been in the truth and the years that other brothers have been in the truth, there is something different this year about the Day of Atonement. And I'm sure I've I've seen a few other brothers do uh, videos on the Day of Atonement. And it seems to be the spirit is all indicating the same thing to all the brothers that uh, the Day of Atonement is of uh, a particular weight this year. You know, as we're getting closer and closer to the deliverance of uh, the Heavenly Father delivering the the children of Israel, the elect, we have to know that these high holy days hold more substance and value than they had before. Okay. And, uh, so let me, let me first start by getting Leviticus, you know, to get a little background on it, but then I'm going to go into it. Uh, this is Leviticus 23 and verse 27. I'll start at 26. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, also on the 10th day of this month, this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, so, you know, we're at the pinnacle of the uh, Hebrew year, man. We're, we're at a very uh, spiritual time um, as far as uh, high holy days and as far as the Heavenly Father and his men and his people are concerned. Okay, he says it's going to be a holy convocation, all right, uh, um, something that's separate than the rest of the world. You know, when the Day of Atonement comes, do you, it, you know, we realize this through the high holy days. While, we're, while they're celebrating uh, worldly hella days, you know, the word holiday comes from holy day, okay? And it's supposed to be a day that's separate and set apart. But, see, they'll celebrate Christmas. They'll celebrate Halloween. They'll celebrate Thanksgiving. But those days are all worldly. They're not separate from the world, you know? Uh, when we had the um, last week or the following week, we had the uh, memorial of the blowing of trumpets, you know, and uh, was the rest of the world reverencing that day? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so now as we come into a time that a day that's meant to afflict your soul, a day of mourning. OK, they don't even have that type of day in the world, man. Now that I think about it. Babylon does not have a day where all the people uh, mourn and, and pray. They try to say like Lent and things like that, but they have to, in order to do Lent, all right, which is like a Catholic holiday, they have to do a lot of wicked things first. They do like Carnival, which is uh, where they, they go out and they act like whores and harlots and feast upon their flesh. That's where you get carne from, you know, meaning meat or flesh, 
you know, and, and saying they can get rid of all that. No, that, that's not the way the Lord works. The Lord doesn't say we can be wicked and get all the wickedness out of our system. And then you can pray for repentance. That's not how it works. When you learn about this truth, you have to change your ways. Okay. So it says afflict your soul. And so what does it mean by uh, afflict your soul? All right. That word afflict, you know, it means to suffer. And so one of the main afflictions that you can do to your being is not being able to eat and not being able to drink. So on the day of atonement, you're not supposed to eat any, any food at all or any drink or drink water, nothing like that. There's not supposed to be any in consumption of things that would satisfy your soul. Okay. And, uh, you know, actually when you go into, in the, you know, Hebrew and the, the, the day of atonement in Hebrew, I might even title it that. But it's called Ha Yawam Kapar. And some brothers might say Ha Kapar Yawam. Uh, ha meaning the, uh, your, uh, your one meaning day, and Kapar meaning atone or atonement. Okay? Uh, and so Ha Yawam Kapar, the day of atonement, is supposed to be a day where you, 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 you're separating yourself from the world, you're afflicting your soul, and you're praying to the Heavenly Father, asking for forgiveness. Okay? So let me go on before I add my next bit. It says... Uh, Verse 28, it says, oh, it says an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So obviously we don't have to make that, that sacrifice of fire anymore. All right. Because we know that our Lord, Yahweh Shai was the ultimate sacrifice. Okay. Let me, I want to get something in Romans really quickly. This is Romans five and 10. Oh, let me start at, uh, let me start at eight. It says, but the Most High commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Hamashiach died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the Most High by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see that? So uh, we were enemies to the throne, so to speak. Uh, because we were in sin, but now we're reconciled to the heavenly father through Yahweh Shai. Okay. And so now reconciled means to be brought back. Okay. He said, we shall be saved by his life. So his death was the, his death was the atonement, the affliction for our sins, but we're reconciled now through, uh, we're going to receive life through his, through his sacrifice. So we no longer have to blur. Uh, you read Hebrews, the ninth chapter. We no longer have to, uh, have goats and rams and sacrifice things by fire animals okay it says and not only so but also in the most high through our lord yahweh shah mashiach by whom we have now received the atonement okay so the ultimate atonement was done through yahweh shah but this day was uh the day of atonement does not just because it says that does not mean we don't have to keep the day of atonement we were judges 5 and 11 says we have to rehearse the righteous acts okay we have to keep the Lord's words the best of our ability. Keep, and those are these are high holy days. These are days meant to uh, keep a remembrance upon who, our history, uh, a day to remember our power and the thing he's the things he has done for us. Okay, and so like for my voice, uh, I know it sounds a little rattled or hoarse. Um, you know, once again, uh, you know, when I was up there with the Atlanta brothers, um, you know, and all the other camps that visited. Uh, it's quite a few of us, so I'm, I'm just not going to name everybody, but all the brothers were up there, Shalom. But, uh, yeah, I was uh, not only were we having a good time and, you know, rejoicing, but uh, laughter can also make your voice go hoarse. So I did a lot of uh, those things with those brothers, so that's why I sound this way. So Salaki. Um Okay, uh, so now I'm going to go back to Leviticus 20, 23. Leviticus 23 and 28, it says, And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord, your power. Okay. So we not supposed to work that day. So all of you brothers out there who, who have jobs, man. Okay. All the brothers who working, we, the apostle Har put this, uh, the, the, the day of atonement, what, like a month ago. And you know, honestly, if you've been in this truth more than a year, you're supposed to know is if you don't take any other two days off of the year, there's supposed to be two days that you should be taken off. Um, the day of uh, the Passover, all right, the first day of the Passover and the uh, day of atonement. Those are the two days that every man in Israel need to be taken off, man. Real talking, you ain't got no excuses for it, man, because you, you ain't, uh, you, we don't have to take off for Christmas. You don't got to take off a, a Valentine's Day, you know, 
So if you don't take you every job, I know you get somebody get vacation days, off days. Hey, shit, if you, even though you got to use a sick day, man, you know, the Lord will bless you that much more. If you think you're losing out of money, the Lord will bless you that much more if you take these days off. And not only that, for you brothers who got physical uh, labor, laborious jobs, hey, man, it's going to be it's going to be hell trying to get through a day without eating or drinking. And your ass got to work in the hot sun all day uh, in the middle and at the end of August, bro. So, man, just tighten up, take that day off, man, and serve the Lord how you're supposed to. OK, but I understand we in Babylon. So if you got to do what you got to do, then do it. But if it's within your capability to take that day off, don't be self-righteous and just think, oh, you know, I'd rather go in and make this money. Oh, we in Babylon. So I ain't got to. And you can't have we can't have that mentality no more. We can't have the mentality like, oh, we in Babylon. So I got I got mercy. You know, we can't do that, man. All right. If you got the opportunity to take the day off, take it off, man. Brothers shouldn't have to be forcing you to take the day off. All right. Or begging you to take the day off. Hey, the Lord shouldn't have to beg you to take the day off. You should willingly want to take that day off, man. OK. Um, so let me go down. Uh, verse 29. It says, for whatsoever soul it be shall not be afflicted in that same day. He shall be cut off from among his people. See that? So of you, let's say you decide to work. Right. And you decide you can't get through work without eating or drinking. All right. The Lord, might, the Lord could know that you very well much know the law. You very much wasn't well know that. Even though, once again, we got mercy and grace in the Lord. But the Lord is asking for one day out of uh, Esau's 365-day calendar. He asks for one day for you not to eat and drink. Of course, uh, the scriptures tell us to fast, right? But there are not days where uh, the Lord is uh, commanding you to fast, man. All right? This is, the, this is the one time that the Lord is commanding you to fast. All right? One day is not going to kill you. The Lord, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who is a pillar, a mentor, and an example unto us, he went 40 days and 40 nights without eating, man. All right? And our Lord was a carpenter, did many miracles, you know? He was a hard worker, and he still was doing what was necessary. He, he still kept the Day of Atonement, okay? But if, if the Lord just shows us that example, you can do it for one day. Moses... Daniel, there are many men in the scripture showing you Ezra, showing you days and weeks and months where they were uh, uh, not not eating or drinking, man. So take this day seriously, because now as we live in 2020 year prophecy and we're seeing all these things take place, we need real talk. We need every prayer that we can get, man. We need the Lord to hear every righteous man's prayer that we can get. We need Lord to hear every righteous so-called righteous woman's prayer that we can get all right we need every child that believes we need that prayer man we need it we need it now more than ever okay um going down the verse yeah and like i was saying you don't want the lord to cut you off man you 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 be like oh yeah you know uh hey the lord could that could be that time where what's that psalms uh 51 and uh, 11 10 and 11 you know where it says keep uh take not thy take me not from thy presence Keep me in that presence. Take not the Holy Spirit away from me. Hey, you don't want to be cut off, man. You don't want to be out here back in your vomit again. The Lord could be like, hey, yo, he was being stubborn, being stiff-headed, hard-hearted, and wanted to eat and drink because he said he had to work. And the Lord might cut your ass off, man. You don't want that to happen to you, brothers. Okay? It says, um, verse 30, And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in the same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. See that? He said, you shall do no manner of work, man. You're not supposed to be working. That's supposed to be a day of focusing on prayer, focusing on the Lord, focusing on uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, focusing on uh, 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 repentance, you know, not, not the ways of the flesh. It's, and see, I was about to say, you're not, not, not even having sex on that day, but it's about to go into that. It says, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month, that even from even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. You see that? So it shall be a Sabbath of rest. We're going to afflict our souls. So no sex, no food, no drink. Okay? None of that, man. For one day, from sundown to sundown. He said, even unto even. It's going to be a Sabbath of rest unto you, man. 
you know, and um, real talk, um, I, as a personal thing, for, I'm going to go get a, one to follow up so brothers don't uh, see the balance in this. But what I do on the Sabbath, I mean, uh, the Day of Atonement, personally, I don't shower. OK, um, this year may be different because we, we uh, you know, uh, we've been talking about hitting the highways and byways uh, on the on the on the. The, the the Friday we're gonna hit the highways and byways on that Friday so I, I might shower it depends on what the spirit hit me but if I usually you know I stay at home I don't um I don't work I am at the home I'm at the house by myself or something you know and I I try to my best to avoid showering because even showering can be a um a way of pacifying and comforting your spirit and that real talk that day is supposed to be a day of 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 a uh, morning man. You're afflicting your soul, you know, but like I said, don't be overrighteous. And I want to get this for all the brothers who don't think that I'm being overrighteous with uh, with that regard. Uh, what is this? Matthew six and verse. Um, it's here. You know, I know it's in Matthew six, you know, when it talks about uh, anointing our head with oil. Con. This is Matthew 6 and verse uh, 16. It says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So when you fast, say for us, you got to go somewhere that day. You don't go around looking all sad. You don't go telling people like, hey, oh, I'm fasting. Hey, oh, it's the day of atonement. You know, you can talk to the brothers. Hey, even technically your household, like of your woman's, your woman. Say for she in the world and she cooking and she want to know why you're not eating. You can tell your woman. You can let your woman know. You, you can let your household know. You know what I'm saying? But even still, don't be acting like you all beat up and, you know, sad. You know, it's because it's really a day of mourning. You know, if, if you go over a couple verses up, it says, when I pray, go into thy closet. So that day is supposed to be a day of prayer. Okay? I might not get to all my verses that I had because uh, hey, this kind of veered in a different way than I expected. But uh, it says... Uh, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth thee in secret reward thee openly. So if you're going to be going on, technically when you go on public, you're supposed to take a shower, put your oil on, you know. So that's why I say if I'm going to camp, I might do that. Um, but... If you're not going to camp or if you're not going out the house, you don't plan on going out the house, man, I don't, I don't like taking a shower. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a part you know, I'm saying, not, hey, man, we Israelites, fuck it. Hey, I, I wash my ass, man. I keep myself clean. You know, you're supposed to be doing the same thing. All right. I, I, I like to smell good. I like to feel good. I like to shower. I like to wash my ass. But that's one day of the year. If I can avoid it, I try not to. Okay. Um, but if you're going out in public, that's what you're supposed to do. So now let me go to uh, Second Chronicles because I mentioned that that day is supposed to be a day of of a prayer, man. All right, we supposed to afflict our souls because that that day we are atoning for all of the the sins that we did. All right, you're praying the Lord for you're asking for forgiveness, okay? And the Lord said He gonna hear the prayers of the saints, man. This is uh, Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. I'll start at uh, 12. It says, And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto, him, I said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice, which is spiritual now because the Lord is choosing the nation of Israel to build his house, his, the house of David. All right? And the Lord said, you going to hear our prayers. It says, If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, all right, and this has been happening. You know, these were things were happening in the ancient world, but they're happening now all over the four corners of the earth. You're seeing people with famines. You're seeing locusts happening. You're seeing uh, rains not coming. You're seeing all of these things, man. You're seeing California get devoured by fire. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and those Israelite foreigners that are scattered abroad amongst the other nations, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their heal their land. 
And that's what we want, man. We want our sins to be, uh, we want the Lord to hear our prayers. We want our sins to be forgiven. And we ultimately want Israel to be healed because when those, those gutter rats over there are taken out of that land and the Lord uh, destroys with the, part, uh, the parts of it and then uh, builds it back and heals it, man, that's what we want. But that's only going to be done after Yahweh Shai returns. It says, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the pray, uh, attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I've chosen to sanctify this house that, that my name shall be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Okay, so this is how we know he's talking about the house of David, man. Okay, the house of David is, is going to uh, re remain forever. And his name is going to be there perpetually through these uh these one third elect members okay this is what we're we're seeking the lord to try to get okay you know and there, of course you know i just want to get this a quick hitter because if we're going to be praying that day of course you're going to do prayer it's going to be times when you do prayer sitting down it's going to be time where you do prayer standing up you know whatever it is but you know i always tell my brothers like when you really feel like that heavy burden on your spirit hey man get down on your knees and pray man you know or uh, get get down uh you know, lift your hands to the heavens man Okay, as the brother in this picture is doing. Okay, this is 1 Kings chapter 8. Is that 1 Kings and 1? Maybe it's, oh, it's locked. I'm reading 2 Kings, that's why. 1 Kings uh, chapter 8 and verse 22. It says, And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord, power of Israel... There is no power like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee all thy heart. So that's the way that you pray is, is, is um, spreading your hands towards heaven. You know, and if you read further down in that chapter, it says, uh, uh, pray with his hands towards this, uh, towards this plate. Let me go. Let me just read it. Verse um, 30. And hearken down to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in the heaven thy dwelling place. And when thou hearest, forgive. You see that? So we pray toward, that's why we pray to the east. But for brothers that are in other countries, you pray towards Israel, okay? That's why we pray to the east because we're in Babylon, which is in the west, okay? But this way, you pray towards this place. So it's not technically east, but you pray, pray uh, whatever is is uh towards israel from your destination okay um i want to read verse 54 as well this is verse 54 it says and it was so that when solomon had made an end of prayer all praying all his prayer and supplication unto the lord he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to the heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh, that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. And see, that's what's going to happen when we enter into the kingdom of heaven, getting delivered. Okay, we need to understand that. So uh, praying, praying with your hands up, praying on your knees, but ultimately, so the Lord is going to keep his promise. But this day is uh, where he's going to, the Lord is going to be out collecting up prayers on this day, man. And you think the rest of the, that's how you know who Israel is. You think the rest of the Lord, I mean, the rest of the world is out here uh, praying to the Lord on one collective day, man. All right. Praying to him, asking for mercy, asking for salvation, asking for forgiveness of their sins. Nah, because they wicked as hell. Okay. This is Ezra 9 and 5, just as a backup on that. It says, uh, And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my power. Okay? It says, And said, Oh, my power, I am ashamed, and blushed to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. So the wicked things that we did, hey, that's when we read Revelation 18 and 5. It says the sins have reached them to the heavens, you know, even two thirds of our people. They're, you best believe that they're out doing more wicked. They're doing hella wickedness. That's why we have to combat it with righteousness, brothers. OK. And so if you there are many, many verses on um, when the pe children of Israel cried into the Lord. I had about five of them, but let me just get two of them uh, just to hit the point. But there are many uh, times when you read. When we were crying to the Lord, the Lord would hear our cry. 
And that's what the Day of Atonement is for. This is Numbers um, 20 and 15. It says, uh, how our fathers went down into Egypt and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time and we're in e modern day Egypt now. And the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. So the uh, so-called uh, the uh, so-called white man and Edomites are vexing us right now, man. And they vexed our fathers. It says, and when we cried unto the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, he heard our voice and sent an angel and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, our, we are in Kadesh, a city of the uttermost of thy border. Okay, so now who's the angel that's going to be sent now? Yahweh Shai. Hey, along with the great multitude of angels. Okay, but Yahweh Shai is going to be an angel sent in this Egypt, man. Okay. Hey, as, technically as he was in the last one. If you really think about it, it says that the destroyer. Okay, the destroyer was, that was the spirit of Yahweh Shai going through wrecking all them Egyptians, man. You know? And let me get, uh, I'm going to get the one in Judges. Because there were time and time, if you read through Judges, every time a judge was lifted up, it was because the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Uh, this is Judges 10, and I'm going to read 10 through 12. It says, um, I'll start at 9. Moreover, the children of Ammon, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. Uh... So the children sore distress, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God, and also served Balaam. So that's why the Lord would get mad. The Lord was pissed off at them when this happened, man. Okay, so there were times where he would destroy Israel, and there were many times that he would save us. Okay? And so this one is actually when he when he smit when he smote them, but it still serves a good point. It says, And the Lord said unto the children, and this is one of my favorite chapters, actually. Uh, going down into the like the 13th, 14th verse. It says, uh, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord saying, Oh, Salaki. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The Zidonians also and the Malachites and the Malonites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. So the Lord says, All these nations that came up against us, he delivered us out of their hands, man. And so on this day of atonement, we got we to gotta sink into this so that we can get delivered out of the hands of the Edomites, man, and all the other nations. It says, um, yet, yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. And so in this time, the Lord ended up, the, the Lord was getting down on them, man. Okay, the Lord was getting down on Israel uh, for, for going off, for disrespecting them. I mean, hey, you know. It's like a, uh, somebody, every time you ask for money, you know, uh, every time somebody asks you for money, you give it to them, you give it to them, you give it to them, you give it to them. And they like this time, hey, Lord, Lord, please deliver us this last time. And you like, nah, man, I ain't giving it to you. Your ass just keep doing the same shit. And you don't, you're not a priest. That's like never, never saying thank you. You know? So the Lord, like, all right, they, they crying wolf is what they're doing. But it says the righteous complain continually and we're sighing and crying so that we can, uh, for all the abominations that be done therein. So now we're sighing and crying in righteousness, not in wickedness. There, but two thirds of our people are still serving Balaam. Two thirds of our people are still want to be wicked. Two thirds of our people don't want to give up uh, this world. So, hey, the, the prophets, the men of the Lord, the people of the Lord, all right, I have to be the ones to serve him in the sincerity and truth. This is Psalm 107. And uh, six, it says, um, actually, oh, this is perfect, actually. Uh, Psalms 107 and uh, four. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. And that's what we're doing now. We're wandering in the wilderness. This place isn't for us, man. It says hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. And this is the going through the wilderness. All right. And so now, uh, you know, we, we're going to be hungry and thirsty on that day. It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. You see that? So the Lord is going to bless us if we cry unto him, and he's going to deliver us out of the distresses of this place and lead us in the right way so we can go to the kingdom of heaven, which is the city of habitation. It says, all that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longest soul, the longing soul, and filled the hungry soul with wickedness. So that day our souls are going to be filled up with uh, righteousness, man. All right? 
So we we going we going it says a man shall not eat by bread alone. So this word is what's going to fill us up that day. Hey, do a lesson. Go to camp. Do a uh, get get with the brothers. Do a sit down. You know, read, study, watch some videos. You know? That that that's the spirit that we need to be coming in on that day. All right? Now the spirit of wickedness because who knows, man, after the day of atonement this year, the Lord might really fuck some shit up, man. We we know the um the uh, the, the, uh, the uh the chip is popping off. You know, we see World War Three happening. Of it, what better time to repent than now, man? What better time to get closer to the Lord than now? Okay. This is uh Second Chronicles six and verse. That's kind of the same, the same one, but I'm going to read 29. Then what prayer, it says, uh, verse 28, if there be dearth in the land, which is famine, if there be pestilence or if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or what, whatsoever sickness, sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people Israel, when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then thou hear from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways whose heart thou knowest for, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers man more so over concerning the stranger which is not of thy people Israel but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake and thy mighty hand and thy stretched our arm if they come and pray in this house then thou, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all to, that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name, which are Israelite foreigners, man. Okay? So the Lord says, if we, if we do these things, uh, we remember him, we pray, we afflict our souls, we uh, atone for our sins, man. Okay? The Lord is going to bless the nation of Israel. The Lord is going to put us up in a place like we never like we never saw before man so take this day very very seriously man stop bullshitting around y'all ready to go home or not man let's keep it funky you ready to go home or not man the men of the lord ready to get the hell up out of this place all right and we're praising the lord to bring it closer this is deuteronomy 26 and 6 and the egyptians and evil and and the egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage and when we cried unto the Lord, our power of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place and has given us his land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey, which is going to be the kingdom of heaven, man. Giving us the things that the heavenly father has promised unto his saints. Okay, because he says on that day, uh, you're going to have the archangels, all right, uh, like uh, Raphael uh, or Raguel said, uh, I forgive Raphael, Raguel, I don't have my pocket for with me, but it says uh, he is one of the, the holy angels that bring it, the uh, prayers of the saints in and out of the temple before the Most High. So the angels are going to be working on that day, man. They're going to be a high overdrive. It's like, you know how Christmas in the world comes up and, and you got like people doing, getting seasonal jobs. And working harder because everybody trying to buy up gifts and stuff like that. The angels are working hard on that day because there's so many prayers going up. Because the scriptures say that those are uh, the prayers of the saints, man. I'm going to get that and then I'm going to wrap it up. This is uh, Revelation 5 and, and 8. It says, And when he had taken the book, talking about Yahweh Shai, the four beasts and four and twenty elders uh, fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, man. All right, so the Lord said he's going to have the prayers of the saints on that day. And that's, those, that's if you want to be forgiven for something, man, all right, the Lord, no, the Lord is constantly forgiving us on a daily basis, man. His mercy is endless, all right? He's long-suffering. But if you want to pray on something, if you want to repent, if you want a spiritual growth, ask for it on that day, man, and repent from your evil deeds and come back to Yahweh Bashem Yashah. So with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Lord willing, Shalom.